Hey everyone, it's Apache here and welcome back to another episode of SevTech Ages here on McCree Craft Server. Thank you for joining me today and continuing to show your support for the series. If you do enjoy this episode, please leave a like and a comment. And if you're new to the channel, don't forget to subscribe as well. Today I'm going to be doing a little bit of uh, preliminary work to set up for going moving on with age one. If we have a look at the advancements, this is age zero and age one. We've got a lot of stuff to do with this because we've got some of the abyssal craft stuff to do. We've got the beneath and later on in world one, we've got things like the, the hunting dimension here and the between land stuff. So we've got a lot of stuff to do before we can actually get to a smeltery and to proper tools and all that kind of stuff. So I think I need to set up a bit more of a permanent base around here. Now my idea for this is that I want to be able to establish myself before I start any of the big builds over at the, the valley base. I'm going to call it the valley base which is the, the, uh, the big tall mountains and the, the, the on three sides around this bowl. Um, so that's going to be the valley base and that is more of an end game or at least a, a mid game um, base setup. It's uh, age two, age three, um, getting into the more industrial stuff. So we can actually do some of the big main builds and I really want to do start my space stuff in there as well. So we're looking, we're talking mid game to late game. So for the early game um, and into the beginning of the mid game, I want a bit of a better place to do that. And so my idea is that there's a guy on the server called Permarin who has been playing here for a while but um, has sadly said that he's uh, not a able to play on the server anymore. He has real world responsibilities but, but he can't get away from and so he has been, he has taken a um, an extended break from Cerberus, he said. And he's also said that um, we can basically strip down his base and do whatever we want with it, uh, just remove the building, do whatever we wish. So I'm actually going to take over his base. Um, he's hardly got anything there, so I'm not just kind of using other people's resources in that way. There's a couple of things we can use, but the, the biggest thing is that there's a fair amount of space and there's also a little bit of infrastructure set up. There's lighting around there and kind of and, and all that kind of thing. So I'm going to show you where it is. Um, do I want to take anything with me? Um, no, I've got everything I need for now actually on, on me. And so here we go. So I'll show you the, the, the course of where it is. So we head down through Nathan's base here. And if we head along this road, we'll get to Wandering One's base. You can just see Wandering One behind me there. He's on my server at the moment. So we head down here. We've got speed three on all of these totems here. And we head on through Wandering One's base here over this bridge. We keep to the left on that fork there. And this is a winding, nice winding little path down. We come to another bridge here. And we keep to the left here as well. And then we head on over this cart bridge as well. And just on the other side of here, it looks like there's nothing here. We carry on on this path there and then we come through into this area here and so this is Permarin's base so if I go straight on in and the horse can stay there I'll uh, lock him up to there there you go and so yeah there's not much here at all he, he's we are further than he was so we're not going to take any of his um, kind of we're not going to jump anything by taking over this base so you can see it's quite a nice um, open layout here there is an area down here for storage and for some more of the uh, kind of that might put the kiln down here and then it might be nice for the smeltery to go down there as well and, and up there's a TP here as well so I quite like this layout. There's a lot of bone blocks. There's also a lot to do to upgrade and make this kind of fully habitable for the age one. But as you can see around here, there is loads of space. And if I go and get my horse, so we're not really slow. Um, I'll show you around the area a little bit more as well. 
pick up the lead and get on the horse. So around the area here we've got the um, the Darklands over there. So we've got a nice quick access to a Darklands biome. Might have to sleep in a minute here just to make sure that it is day when I'm showing you all of this. So let's sleep. I only sleep at night. Nearly there. There we go. Okay, so now I can actually show you around a bit better. So we've got, um, yeah, nice access to a Darklands biome there. We've got nice access to the road layout. And that road layout is going to go from, where is it, over here. We're going to have to cut down some of these trees, build this path across to our base, because it's going to run through where those trees are, along the side of this base here, and then through into the Darklands. So we're going to have a path going all the way through the Darklands and then there is a savannah on one side of the Darklands and a mesa on the other side of the Darklands over there. The mesa is actually really amazing. I wonder if I can come up and show you quickly as well. So we head on up. I think we have to head all the way up to the top of here for you to be able to see it. Ah, it's coming into view now. Look at these. I love this. Just the sheer size of these needles sticking up. And from what I can see, that is all, whoa, almost, um, red sand. You can see there is the savannah biome there, and this is a mesa biome here. So we've got some really nice biomes going on, really nice diversity of, of stuff that we can pick up. We've got a load of dead bushes from over there, and the savannah, lots of acacia wood. Um, and hopefully the savannah will be next to a desert, we can get some of the desert temples. See if there's any loot in the desert temples we haven't got so far. Um, and then, yeah, we head back over through this little swamp area here and back to our base. So, yeah, I'm going to move across all of my stuff. And I'm doing this mainly because um, I have to go away for the weekend this weekend. And I don't want all of my stuff over there so that Nathan can't expand into that area. I want all of my stuff kind of neatly packed away over here. I like the fact that I can drive my horse around here uh, throughout the inside of my base. I take a little bit of damage as I get off, but that doesn't matter. So long as I'm not on half a heart when I get off the horse, I'm not going to die from it. Uh, so yeah, I'm going to spend a little bit of time. Um, actually, no, I suppose just before we cut away, I've brought with me 32 chests to start packing, uh, start Pack in the place here. Um, I'm not going to be able to open them there. So if I put all of these down like this, then I will be able to... In fact, no, I want those a little bit differently. And I can hear a zombie. It means there's some fairly surface level caves over here, which have been covered up. Get rid of all of these. And let's put them there and there, there and no. There. And then I can put them like that. And then these ones would be like that, and these ones. like this. And so that will give me plenty of storage to be able to sort all of my stuff out properly into boxes. Um, I can put another one here and that's me done. Excellent. So that's plenty of storage for now. And if you've seen my videos before you know I like really kind of detailed storage systems. And I cannot wait until we get into AE because AE is my uh, my big love in this game. A proper organised storage system um, is exactly what I need right now. Because I'm already starting to get too much stuff to be able to just put into random chests. So yeah, let me get back to you. I will bring across all of my stuff, put it into boxes, um, label everything up 
and we should have a really nice area over here to start working with. And here we are coming back to the base now. I've brought over all of the stuff and I've actually taken down a lot of his um, base here. So I've left the, the structure, or it would kind of be the oak structure, where you, so you can see where it was. And I've built up a little block chart here of the pieces that I might use to, to build quite a large building in this area. And so I'll show you just underground what I've done there. There's my hitching post. If I don't hitch the horses up, they tend to wander off, so I usually do that. And if we head down into here, you can see I've brought over all of the chests. And so yeah, there's all kinds of stuff in here. And I'm using this one at the moment, just to put stuff in. There we go. Um, so I've been collecting up a load of limestone, of course, all of these bone blocks we've managed to salvage. Um, a lot of oak, a lot of iron wood, olive wood, and that has made, been, been used to create this block chart here. So I really want to use the limestone, as I said in the episode with Nathan and at the beginning of the series. I really like using limestone as a building material. I think it works really well. Um, it's a bit more of a textured pattern and you can do a lot with it with uh, chisel as well. We quite haven't We haven't quite got to the stage of chisel yet. Uh, but it will be coming soon, as soon as we find some iron. And so my idea for over here, I need to do a lot of clearing out. But I want to um, redevelop a building that I created in uh, Hermit Pack. I used a lot of ideas in Hermit Pack from Schematica, well from the Minecraft Schematics website. And then developed a few of my own buildings using those uh, designs and styles. And now I want to try and add some limestone into that mix and maybe some lime wood as well instead of the oak wood. Um, and so what I'm going to do now is open up some of this area, um, level off some of this land just a little bit to give me enough space to put a fairly large building in that I can then use for my tinkers, uh, for storage, um, might use the underground bit for storage and um, there'll be places in the loft for storage, there'll be places underground for the abyssal craft and everything we need in age one. So let me go back to you and I will have this area a lot more clear. So the path from over there by the bridge will come all the way through here, down here, you can see I've cleared out some uh, a path here. And this is the footprint of the building which we're going to build. And so we have a few different places to this. This is going to be three stories up here. So it'll end up quite tall. It'll end up about there um, where we are standing now. I've built up a little um, dirt path up here just so that I can get a bit of a taller view on this. So yeah, so this is going to be three stories. So we'll have um, various different things we'll be able to put in there. A kitchen area, food preparation, um, I don't know what else, all kinds. Um, this bit here is a two-story warehouse area. Um, so it's going to be storage. It's going to be some of the things like the alloy kiln in there. And then out here is a large smeltery, a large tinker smeltery as well. So this is, I think it's a five wide uh, tinker smeltery, which goes up fairly tall. Um, I did do this in Hermit Pack, if you have seen that. This was my smeltery building. But I am changing it up a bit with the different materials that we're going to be using. You can see up in the Badlands there, there is a um, kind of construction that someone's built. I'm not sure who and I'm not sure for what purpose. But I might do the Abyssal Craft stuff up there instead of anywhere around here. But I haven't quite decided on any of that yet. So I think I need now to gather up a load of olive trees. So do I have any food on me? No, of course I don't. Over here, I need to crawl over here because I can't run. Down into here and where's all my food? Food, 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 that'll do. No, that really won't do, that's really terrible. Um, what else can we get? What else do we have to eat? Cooked mystery meat, that'll do a bit. Wild berries, they'll be fine. Nice and fast, there we go. Right, now that I'm back up and running, um, I need to get uh, the saplings. Now where did I put those? Olive saplings. 
And so I need to plant a load of these. I need to sleep because it's night time. There we go. And now, yeah, I need to pl uh, plant a load of these saplings so that I can get a load more of this wood and hope we get a load of saplings back in return. So once again over by the bridge we're coming into the base area. I've done the first level of it. I haven't put the floor in but I've done everything else. So this is the first story, the ground floor. And so I've put the path in all the way through to the front door, uh, to the workshop area and out towards the dark lands over there. So let's put our horse onto our little dirt post here. And we'll head up to the top of this little grass pillar and see what it looks like from there. So this is it. Here is the, the ground floor with the uh, limestone. The cobblestone on the bottom. I may change out the cobblestone, I'm not too sure yet. I'll have a look at some various different uh, woods and other kind of materials I can do it with. I don't think the marble will look there, good there, but the bone blocks may look fairly decent there so I'll have a look at them. So this is it for now. I've put in all the detail across the very bottom, all the detail across the middle of it there and there's still another two stories to go onto this building and another story to go onto that building. Over here I've found this huge great big um, uh, ravine area here which has been partially covered over by somebody on the server, I'm not sure who. I would imagine Pomaro, so it's this was his area. We can come over and have a look at that. Oh hello Mr. Zombie. Kill you off. So there's lots of little caves and caverns around here. There's one down here which goes down quite far down there. There's one over here which leads you through to the ravine area and this is a huge ravine this takes you down to nowhere but then this bit is huge lots of little cabins going off all over the place it's deadly as well um, there is just up there there's another little hole up there and zombies keep pouring out of there and then all the way around here there's lots of limestone in these rocks as well which is good there's another zombie get in the hole thank you big nice deep hole there so let's head back out of here because I don't really want to be caught up in here and see where the sun is as well should be fairly new day yeah, we're fine. Not even midday yet. And that comes out just onto the road here. So just off the road, we have a huge cavern that we can explore. We can go mining in. We can do all sorts with that. That was really nice. Uh, I lost my horse somewhere as well. There you are. So that's it. Um, I'm thinking about using the oak wood for the first floor. Um, I think that'll look okay. And then I've just got to do the roofs as well. And maybe either spruce wood or dark oak for the uh, second floor on this building. But yeah, let's... Uh, oh yeah, and this is where the um, smeltery is going to go. So I'll put a little hole in for the smeltery. Oh yeah, and just before I do some more work... I'll show you downstairs. I've cleaned up downstairs and I've opened it up a bit as well. So in here, basically I've carved out underneath. This is where the smeltery is. So it allows me to do work underneath the smeltery. Do a bit of automation where we can, when when we can, when we get some redstone. And then in here, this is underneath the main warehouse area. And this is my uh, main storage area at the moment so that I can actually work up above. And then in here is the uh, kind of the main living quarters. This is the, the main cellar for the li living quarters. And that brings you up just here. And then I've got a little um, staircase up to the top. So that's it. Let me get on with some work and I will catch you in a minute.
So here we go, just as it's starting to get dark, it's quite a nice light to see it in in the dark. So the house is now finished. And here we go. I'm not too sure about a couple of things on this house. So it looks a little bit busy with a couple of these uh, additions that I've added on. So first of all, the forge is the first obvious thing which needs changing. I don't have anywhere near enough of these uh, seared bricks. So I haven't been able to put all of the bricks in for the smeltery. However, I will be gathering up um, a load of sand. I've got a load of clay already. It's mainly sand that I'm lacking because I can get a load of gravel anyway. So yeah, I'm going to need to go down to a beach somewhere or dig up a, um, a little lake somewhere, get a load of sand, which we can make into grout and then into seared bricks. Currently, I have the melter in here. Uh, with the heater underneath, just exactly the same as, as, as we had before. Um, I'm melting down copper at the moment to make copper blocks, and I've got a load of copper in here ready to process. Um, in here I've got all of the kind of spare clusters and ores and stuff ready to be processed. And in here I have all of the finished um, ingots and blocks. On the other side of the path over here, I have the um, kiln, the alloy kiln, with a copper chest over here just to put anything from this into it. And a little blo uh, block chopping station on here. I've had to make a ton of wood planks and stairs and all sorts for this. So this has been my station for doing that. You can see I've got all kinds of stuff in here and various mob drops and stuff. I need to clear up these chests, clear them out of here and get more sorted. These chests are actually pretty easy to make, these copper chests. They have five lines in them instead of three as a normal uh, wooden chest has uh, three lines up to here. And these copper ones have five. If you put um, a normal chest in the middle of a crafting grid with eight uh, dirt around it, it will become a dirt chest. Um, one of these, the dirt chest 9000. And then if you place that into the smeltery here with um, eight ingots poured onto it, just like that, it'll become one of these copper chests. So it's not too expensive at this stage. I will start bringing um, all of my chests up to, uh, up to scratch on that. Down here, first of all, I'll show you. I have pretty much exactly the same. I don't think much has changed down here at all. Um, in fact, no, I don't think anything's changed. One thing that does keep happening, I keep getting the uh, graphical glitches. And if I just grab a piece, I don't know, um, yeah, a piece of granite will be fine. If you just place something next to them, that'll become a regular torch. And it happens with, um, up in here, I have these... Uh, fences because I can't make glass yet or at least I've got no easy way of making glass yet but some of these I don't know if there will be any left up here they come out as blocks just as regular spruce blocks and you have to give, give them an update uh, and then they will change over to fences I think it's got something to do with going between age 0 and age 1 as for the outside of the house, the one thing I'm not too keen on at the moment, not too sure about, is these iron wood stairs all over the place on here. I think it makes it look a little bit too busy. I was wanting a contrasting colour. Um, usually these are done in spruce wood, so that colour right there where the cursor is there. And it looks okay, but I think this is a bit too bright and makes it look a bit too chunky. Um, I really like the, the pattern on it when it's done in the in the spruce and I was hoping that it would come out okay but it doesn't seem to have done. Anyway let's take the tour. I've had to use buttons instead of pressure plates because I don't have access to pressure plates yet. So if we head on in this is the first room um, which I think you've seen actually and then this will be the kind of a more warehouse area. Upstairs in here we have a second room up here. I haven't put the, um, the fences in on the windows, but we get a nice view out here 
of the, the Darklands biome over there. And then if we head back down, head through, I put a winding staircase up. This is a change to the original design of mine, uh, where I had the uh, staircase going from here all the way up to there. Uh, but it meant that I couldn't have windows here or here. So with this new design, I am actually able to have windows uh, at the front of the house. So it makes it look, look a lot better. Up here, I may change a couple of the aesthetics of this. I may change out the floor for a different type of wood. Because at the moment, it's looking a little bit kind of single colour with a spruce ceiling. So I'm not fully sure exactly how this is going to end up. Uh, once the glass is in, um, probably end up changing the floor there. And then finally up here in the eaves we have the second floor. And so this is the attic on, in the second floor. And you can see out, um, as you can see I've covered over some of the ravine there. Um, and then this way you can see, oh is that an ocean? Might be an ocean, might be a very large lake or river. Yeah, it's quite nice. So that is it for my first build on the series. Um, let me know what you think about it. Uh, what do you think I should change these iron wood stairs out to? Or do you think it looks okay? I'll show you from this side because there's a lot of it on this side. Um, but yeah, I, I am still unsure about that. So let me know what you think about that. I'm also going to put a couple more buildings in over here. I think I've worked out over here, this place here is going to be a stable. It's quite a large stables with a hayloft in it. And then over here, just here, is going to be a big barn, again, with another hayloft in it. I need to get into immersive engineering to fully finish those two projects, though, because I need treated wood and cables and a few other things. But there should be a load of other buildings going up around here. I'm going to put the floor plans uh, for these, because it's kind of the base level floor plan, and do a bit of the terraforming work I need to do between episodes. But that is it for today, I'm afraid. So, thank you very much for joining me today. If you did enjoy this episode, please leave a like, comment, and subscribe on the video and to the channel, and I will. See you next time. If you enjoyed this video, please consider supporting me by subscribing to the channel and liking and commenting on the videos. Thanks. See you next time.